Hey Venture Crew, today we're going to run through what is an XML sitemap, why do you need one, and how do you install it on your WordPress website. Let's go. All right, so no fluff here. We're gonna get right into it. Installing an XML sitemap on your WordPress website is very easy. We have a plugin that can do that for us. So we'll direct you right to the right plugin and we'll get right to it. So first of all, we just wanna run through super quickly in this video. Um, some of you may be wondering, first of all, I heard somebody tell me I need an XML sitemap. What is it and why do I need it? Yoast has an amazing article on this. So if you're not familiar with Yoast, it is the <clears throat> pretty much the premier SEO plugin that's out there and available for use on your WordPress website. But Yoast has a really good um, page here that we'll link to down in the description um, and the, the blog post as well on our site um, that talks about why, what is an XML sitemap and why do you need one? So basically what the Yoast article goes through is an XML sitemap is literally just a file that is an easily navigable layout of all the content on your website. The reason that you need this is simply because Google would like to see an organized list of everything that you have on your website. Think of it kind of like a map for all the content on your website. So basically, long story short, what you need an XML sitemap for, and it's very important for SEO purposes, is to be able to give Google a very clear, clean map of how to look at all the content that's on your website. Without one of these, Google just kind of has to, you know, play it by ear and kind of find all the content and not really understand how it's all organized on your site. The way to set this up is very easy, so let's jump in and do that. Okay, so on your WordPress website, let's jump over here. Um, when you're logged in, have your WordPress website installed, we're gonna go and ahead and jump back over here to plugins, and we're just gonna go to add new plugin, and we're simply just going to search um, XML sitemap. And here it is. This top left one is a perfect one that we can use. It's called XML sitemaps. It's got over a million active installations. So that's a great way that we can kind of have trust in the plugin to say, look, if over a million people are using this, it's a good solid plugin to use. That's not the only criteria we want to use when deciding on whether a plugin is good for us or not, but it's a good one to use. To be clear as well, you can see that there's two pretty popular SEO plugins that are shown in this list, Yoast, as well as this all-in-one SEO plugin. Those are pretty much the two biggest SEO plugins that are available, along with Rank Math that's down here as well. Um, but basically those plugins are gonna come along with a lot of other features for SEO that we may not focus on, and we're not gonna focus on in this video. So for this video, all we wanna do is just like, hey, I need to just get a sitemap installed. I don't need all the other SEO bells and whistles that come with it. Let's just do a sitemap only, all right? So that's what this video is for. So let's just use this XML sitemaps plugin. Let's go ahead and install. And once we're finished installing, we can go ahead and activate. Now, the cool thing is, technically, as soon as we activate that plugin, we're done because it creates the XML sitemap of our site and now it's available for Google to crawl um, as we go and set up our site in Google Search Console and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but let's go ahead and just take a look at um, the plugin real quick. Let's go to settings and then let's go to XML sitemap. And we're just gonna super quickly run through some of the default settings that the plugin sets. Um, again, we wanna keep this real easy and real, um, real easy to kind of run through a really beginner level on how to do this and why you need it. But I just want to quickly explain some of the um, some of the settings that are here. So first of all, let's actually take a look at if we look at um, basically the um, the sitemap, we can get a look at what it actually looks at looks like. So this is basically what a sitemap looks like. If you go and look at your sitemap, which is just your site URL slash sitemap.xml in the URL bar, um, you can basically see here's all the links to all the content that's on your website. So as you can see, we have a very basic website right now and we don't have a lot of content on it. Bigger websites will have a much, much larger list here along the way. But we just wanted to show you what a sitemap looks like. All right, back to the features. Basically on the features, um, we have this notify Google for updates. Basically you wanna leave that checked. It's gonna let Google know when content updates on your site, you wanna let Google know that. So it's gonna let leave that checked. Add sitemap URL to your robots.txt file. This is another file that's on your website and you do want that sitemap URL added to the text file, which is great. So we have that there as well. Um, it's gonna try to automatically compress the sitemap. That's a little bit of a techie feature. Just the size of the file can get kind of big sometimes. So we wanna keep that compressed if we can. We wanna leave it in, uh, allow it to be in HTML format. So we want um, Google to be able to search the, the, find the sitemap in HTML format. A couple other random features here. Uh, this sitemap content um, one is one that you may wanna play around with, but the default things that are selected here, 
are pretty common. So you can see here we want to, this is selling us what should or shouldn't we include in the sitemap to give to Google. Okay, so this is basically, we want to include our homepage, of course, all of our posts on WordPress, our product categories and tags would be for e-commerce and then static pages. So this is pages, posts, and homepage. Those are the three big things that we want to make sure Google can see on our site. And those are all checked. Um, you can decide if you work with an SEO company or you work with somebody or you get a little bit more fancy and advanced on this, you can decide if you want to add categories and archives and author pages and tag pages in there. But by default for most people, we want to go ahead and just leave this set the way it is. So that's the same uh, for all of these. And then change frequencies are basically how often are the change frequencies reported to Google. So we can see homepage would be daily, post or monthly, which is how often are sitemap updates being made. Um, you can increase this frequency if you'd like to. Uh, for people who are doing more SEO work on their sites, you might want to increase this frequency, but by default, that's okay the way it's set. And then priorities. This kind of tells in the sitemap, it tells Google what are the most important pages on the site. And so 1.0 homepage, that means 1.0 is, that's the, the highest priority is 1.0, okay? So that's homepage. And then you can see we go on down from there, posts, um, static pages, categories. You can see posts and pages are at 0 0.6 each. Those are about the same amount of priority. And those are all set the way it is. So honestly, just backing up to see this, we didn't really change much of anything um, in order to, you know, from these default settings. Um, so basically, um, we can um, kind of let it know um, let it know that now the only and we can kind of excuse me leave the default features the way they are with this the only thing we're going to want to do there's this one note in here that says search engines haven't been notified yet write a post to let them know about your sitemap so basically all we have to do now in order to kind of force our sitemap link out to google and say hey google you know we've got a new sitemap going on our um, on our site here is to go to all posts and we can literally just create any new post that we want to. So obviously if you're on a site and you care about, you know, the way this looks and, and what it is, we want to go ahead and, you know, basically you would think like, Hey, I'm going to, you know, add new content to my website or whatever it is. So, you know, if this is just a brand new bare website, like we're using now, we would just kind of create any post say like, you know, new, even like new website, let's say coming soon. And we could say, um, Hello to everyone who is going to be visiting our site, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then we can go on and add some more content if we want there and go ahead and publish. The reason we want to do this is just because publishing that post literally puts basically puts out the feelers for, the, for the, the next time Google comes and sees your website. They say, oh, I see the sitemap is there as well. Just kind of makes Google aware that we've got new, new post content that's been posted to this website. Um, so that again, this is if you have a brand new fresh website, you're not doing anything with, um, if you are already have a website and you post post blog posts on a regular, uh, regular current, um, recurring schedule, then, um, you would also see, you know, obviously the next time you post a blog post, this is going to notify Google of the sitemap. But basically that's it guys. we got a sitemap installed, uh, a plugin installed. And then as we post new content, it will be added to the sitemap and Google will be able to crawl our website easier, better for SEO. We're ready to go. All right. Hope this was helpful and quick and easy and to the point. Um, if you like this, uh, there'll be lots more content coming from our channel and from our blog at WPVenture.com coming soon. Please like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you soon. Cheers.